In this episode, we learn how to hold our breath for freediving and we plan our trip towards Colombia, known for a tough crossing. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart. And here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33 foot sailboat. Tranquility. Last week we explored a wreck here on Curacao, prepared the boat for our next destination and faced a tropical depression. What are we about to do? Freediving. We start the practical part of the ADA 2 freedive course. Danny is our teacher and we participate together with Christina and Dirk, who are also cruisers here on Curaçao. We start with a static dive, holding your breath for at least two minutes. Before you start to hold your breath, we begin with relax phase. Four, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, four, the most important part of this exercise is focus and mindset. These two determine how long you can hold your breath. So after these five sets, we breathe normally for about 10 seconds and try to find like a sleepy feeling. Me thinking of my bed always helps. My bed and my feet <laughs> helps me. Yeah. After this, you do your peak inhale to start the static part. A full inhale is something like this. Carry first, chest, shoulders, neck. Breathe normally now for about 10 seconds, nice and slow. Think about your pillow and your bed. Catch a sleepy feeling. Second heel in five, four, three, two, one, and heel and hold. Relax the neck. Very good. Relax the shoulders. When you feel like you can no longer hold your breath, it is important to hold your hands to the fender, spread your legs in a squat position and keep your chest under water, and start the recovery breaths. Because we stayed above the 5 meters, you take 6 shallow breaths three, once you get up. Two, one. Come up and breathe. Three, I was able to hold my three, breath for 2.37 two, minutes, three, but Bart beat me with 3.04. Of course, it's no match. Unfortunately, our GoPro stopped working during this session. Luckily, Andre brought his GoPro so we could continue filming. The second part of the day is about line diving. At first we dive down the line with our hands. This was the hardest exercise for me, because I find it hard to equalize, hold the line and pull myself down. It took a lot of time and energy and the second round I could not equalize anymore. So I had to stop for this part.
Bar didn't have any trouble equalizing and enjoyed this part. Time for the dock dive. The dive you use in free diving to descend fast with less energy, because the weight of your feet make you go down. Not as easy as it sounds. The final exercise of the course was to dive to at least 12 meters while finning and not holding the line. That sounded really deep to me, and it is. But you build up the depth from 5 then to at least 12 meters. I was a little worried about my equalization, but I had no need to. I could equalize again and it was even easier than when holding the line. I was so happy. Bard had no trouble at all and enjoyed it as well. And yes, there are dangers to freediving, but this is why we did the course and learned how to spot a diver in trouble and how to rescue him. A freediver holds his breath, so he will exhale before he can drown. This is why you grab his jaw and keep the mouth closed until you reach the surface. At the surface remove his mask and blow and tap. A blow in the face is a natural reflex to start breathing again. Free diving gives us a very calming feeling. It was an intense and exhausting day, but so much fun and I was impressed by what our bodies can achieve and how powerful your mindset is. I made it to 80.5 meters and bar to 24. Two personal records. So proud of us. We are getting ready for the next passage and this one is a tricky one. I must say it's more tricky than the Atlantic crossing because that would take a very long time and this is only a short sail. But this sail is in the number five of difficult passages for sailors. Um, we are going to Santa Marta, Colombia from Curacao and the next days there are some turbulence in the weather, there are some low pressures coming by tropical waves and um, normally they are good because they make sure that the wind is not that fast. Well let me expl explain a little bit about the passage, why it is so difficult. The first part isn't difficult at all, uh, from Curacao to Aruba and to the um, first big land of Colombia is gonna be an easy part normally. Uh, you've got the wind from the east so it's a downwind sail um, normally winds are strong, still trade winds, so uh, 20 knots, 15 to 20 knots average. But then the difficult part kicks in. On Colombia you've got the Cabo de Vela. In Spanish that means Cape of Wind. So they named it for a reason. <laughs> it's a sand mountain um, where the wind can accelerate. Mainly the ocean there is still flat, so not really a problem, but if you've already got gusts uh, predicted from up to above 20 knots, you can easily count 15 to 20 knots extra on the wind speed, so you can get like 40, 45 knots there. So we really want to avoid it, but that's not really the big problem. If you go further along, you'll get alongside the Sierra Nevada. Those are very high mountains and it's in the world, it's the only place in the world where the ocean meets this high mountain. So the Sierra Nevada is a very high mountain area which is very close to, to the ocean. And uh, 
that will give you a lot of acceleration zones, wind falling from the mountains down. So everybody suggests if you want to sail there, do it with no wind at all, because you would get 30 knots of gusts down the mountains. If you sail there with more than 50 to 20 knots, that can easily come to 60 knots of guns, gusts. Um, there's also a current alongside against you. And most of the time the wind is with you. So you got wind against current, which causes very steep and high waves and anno annoying sea. So the fine, so the, the the difficult part is in the uh, in the end of the trip, really. So that's why we are looking for a weather window where we don't have that much wind, especially on the end. Um, and that's what we're trying to find. Our motto throughout this trip is: a sailor with time does not have to sail in bad weather. And that also counts for this passage. We would love to continue our journey, but with weather we feel comfortable about. Because of a few low pressures, the weather is unstable and changes a lot. In the last week of October we looked at a weather window and at that point November the 1st looked good, with a nice breeze when we would leave Curaçao. We used the weather routing pro program Predict Wind to help us with finding the best weather window for us. As you can see, we have a few starting dates. The weather program shows us the wind, gusts, rain and cape index. The last one indicates the chances of thunderstorms. But during that week, the weather forecast changed and showed some bad weather on Wednesday. The day we would pass Cabo de Vela and get to the part where we meet the Sierra Nevada. Not only the wind increased, but there is also a lot of rain predicted and a big cape index, which means a big chance on thunderstorms, not something we would like to sail in. And as you can see, by delaying our start date, we would get in trouble at Santa Marta, where the wind would get against us. We decided to monitor the weather and decide on the final day if we would leave. morning on this uh, dreadful morning we just made the decision to not sail to Colombia um, what you see around me is exactly what we are uh, going to experience when we set sail tonight or tomorrow morning to Colombia um, I mean the, the winds looked in our favor but the, the gust prediction is getting higher and higher than before um, and on top of the gust prediction you can add extra knots of wind uh, around the Cabo de Vela and uh, near the Sierra Nevada near Santa Marta so uh, it's not very a motivational trip uh, probably no sun at all and um, also there's big chances of thunder and lightning along the way especially on uh, Wednesday when we are going to round the Cape so for us this is the difficult decision to stay longer in Curaçao and wait for another opportunity and um, yeah we really wanted to leave but now it doesn't feel right and uh, as we always said um, we make the journey we can uh, still slow our travel pace is, is, is slow we don't have to be anywhere at any time so we can make the decision a uh, so like they say a sailor with time on his hand never experienced bad weather and that's what we're gonna do now in the next episode we are still stuck on Curaçao so we explore again and we look for another weather window well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.